What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks, I'm your host Caleb. Special shout out to my high contributing patron, Newsom, you rock. Now let's get into today's Deck Tech with Ovika, and this is the weekly voted patron Deck Tech. So if you want to become a part of that, link to the patrons in the description down below. Now let's get into how we built this deck. Pretty simple, we want to get our commander out as fast as possible. So we have a lot of low to the ground artifacts to ramp us hard, and a lot of little bit more expensive artifacts to again ramp us. That way we get a little bit of a benefit when Ever we're casting those artifacts and we're ramping and our commanders out that way we're creating a huge board of those hasty goblins another thing we're definitely going to run in this deck is some discard and draw effects i like the discard and draw effects in this deck because we are running a lot of very um high cost cards in this deck so early game we really need to be able to rifle through our deck get those into our graveyard get them out of our hand and that way we can get into the useful cards that will ramp us into our commander from there we're going to play a lot of cards that benefit from us having a lot of really small creatures. Stuff like Cavalcade of Calamity, Impact Trimmers is going to be extremely huge. Also, we do have Geisen Starn. Geisen Starn is basically going to triple up all of our damage, along with this uh, City on Fire, I do believe it is. Also, it has Convoke, so it's kind of got a cool interaction where we can just slam this on the battlefield, create eight tokens, and then those eight tokens have haste pretty busted and can result in you killing an opponent if not winning the game. So if that sounds like a deck tech you'd like to get into, let's get into it. Let's kick it off by talking about the super expensive spells we're going to run. Temporal Trespass is going to be amazing. I'm always on the board of if you're going to play an extra turn spell, you better be winning soon. And Temporal Trespass is definitely going to set us on the way to winning the game. Sorcerer's Squall and Spell Swindle are going to be amazing because they're actually going to allow us to cast the spells that we get from our opponents and ourselves. So not only are we going to get two triggers off of the Sorcerer's Squall, we're also going to get three triggers off of Spell Twine which is going to be insane. Complete the circuit and city on fire give us insane value because of the convoke abilities. Nine times out of ten we can just cast these for free. City on fire is especially just messed up because you're going to get eight of those goblins and then those eight goblins are going to do triple damage. So if no one has a blocker, you're dealing 24 damage that turn with just city on fire in your commander. Pretty insane. Call forth the tempest is a one-sided board wipe, which is notably where we want to be in this deck since we are going super wide. We also get double cascade which is going to be insane and trigger our commander a ton ugin the spirit dragon i just love this guy so we're gonna toss him in the deck hit the mother load another solid way to get a huge activation off of our commander and continue the storm because we get all of those treasure tokens or we get to cast another big spell divergent transformations and advice from the fey are both cards that we can cast at a reduced cost notably though on the stack they will see the cmc of the card so our commander is going to trigger for the maximum amount which is going to again net us a ton of those goblins shark typhoons also going to be pretty solid here on top of netting us six goblins it's also just going to start turning our board into a go tall strategy instead of a go wide strategy so that's going to be really hard for our opponents to deal with chrome host seed shark doesn't trigger our commander because it's a creature but again this is kind of one of those shark typhoon effects that we can get down really early that way we can get into the late game and uh get some crazy spells off with our commander song of totem tans thassa's intervention pull from tomorrow mind spring all x spells that can be very useful in the early game and then late game can just win us the game out of nowhere Throne of Eldraine's a solid card since this is only a two color deck and it's just going to get us a lot of goblins. Mana Geyser can be absolutely insane in these decks that just want to cast massive red spells because nine times out of ten you're adding 15 to 20 mana to your mana pool with this spell. Irenicus's Vile Duplication and Quantum Misalignment is just going to net us two of our commanders. Doubling up on those goblins that are hasty is going to be insane and honestly result in us winning the game pretty quickly. Mizzix's Mastery another solid one because again it allows us to cast the copy so we're still getting that cast trigger off of our commander and we're casting probably something super massive from our graveyard now let's utilize all of those goblin bodies we have shared animosity is going to be amazing let's say we have five goblins now they're all five ones that's going to end the game extremely quickly from there we have raid bombardment and cavalcade of calamity this is just going to essentially double up on all of the damage our goblins do and our goblins don't even
even have to connect to start doing the damage. Speaking of not having to connect, Perforo's God of the Forge and Impact Tremors are going to be insane at, again, not having to attack and killing all of our opponents at the same time. Garson's Star and Kelomorph is also one of the best cards in this deck. The fact that it's going to allow all of our things to do triple damage is insane. This is going to trigger off of Raid Bombardment, Cavalcade of Calamity, it's going to trigger off Impact Tremors, it's also going to just trigger off whenever those goblins deal combat damage. Again, get this guy on the battlefield and you are prepped for a W. Mana Echoes is insane. You just keep casting spells and getting mana back because you're going to choose Goblin. So now you cast an 8 CMC spell, you get 8 Goblins, and you get 8 Colorless Mana. This is going to be an insane storm turn for you and will result in you 9 times out of 10 winning the game as long as you have that card advantage. Skirk Prospector is super solid. It's like a budget Phyrexian altar in this deck. You just sacrifice those goblins to add mana to your mana pool. Nanogen Conversion. Now we can turn all of those goblins into our commander. Cast one spell after that and yeah, you probably are going to win the game. Magnus of the Red is also super solid in this deck. Now all of our instant sorcery spells cost less for all of the tokens we have. This is going to be amazing for our X spells along with all of our other very expensive instant and sorcery spells. Brightstone Ritual and Battle Hymn are going to be very useful just to cast them for a huge ritual since we have a ton of uh, goblins on the battlefield. We are running a ton of high CMC spells, so we definitely need some discard outlets to get us through our library, making sure we can cast our commander and discard those 8 CMC spells in the early game. Faithless Looting, Seize the Spoils, Big Score, and Unexpected Windfall are very solid cards to do this. Not only do they rifle us through our deck, but some of them are going to net us some treasure tokens to ensure that we're still ramping into our commander while we're rifling through our library finding our ramp pieces. Frantic Search, again, another solid way to rifle through your deck and get the key pieces we need to get our commander down. Windfall, Reforge the Soul, and Wheel of Misfortune. Late game, they're going to just refill our entire hand, and in the early game, again, they're going to get those expensive 8 drops out of our hand. Let's talk about the core of the deck. We have Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp, one of the best cards in the deck. All you have to do is spend 1 mana, and boom, you're drawing a card off of those goblins. Past in Flames, another super solid card, especially since we have a ton of rituals, and we are going to be discarding our giant 8 drops in the early game, so just having access to them in the late game is going to be perfect. This is also another card you can easily discard in the early game to find your uh, very cheap ramp pieces. Jessica's Will, Seething Song, Rousing Reframe, just some solid rituals that get us into our commander really early. Jinka Taxis is going to be some solid card advantage, and if you flip this over, you're going to draw a ton of cards. It's going to be a one-sided board wipe because all of those goblins and your commander are also Phyrexians, and then if that wasn't good enough, that last ability probably just does win you the game. You get to basically cast everything for free until end of turn you have omniscience and again yeah that's going to trigger your commander a ton they cannot let that get off Resculpt for some solid removal, an offer you can't refuse, Arcane Denial, Swan Song, and Counterspell as our Counterspells of choice. Vandal Blast just to get rid of the, our opponent's artifacts, Blasphemous Act. This will trigger a commander, but then it's just going to wipe away all of those goblins. It might be notable if we have something like Impact Tremors on the battlefield, but 9 times out of 10, we're probably casting this before we cast our commander, clear the board, and then cast our commander into an empty board. That would be the best scenario. Moving on to ramp, we have your standard stuff with Soul Ring, Warefarer's Bobble, Fell War Stone, then we have your Mind Stones, your Signets, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Creativity, Worn Power Stone, now we're getting into the expensive ones, Thran Dynamo, again this one's also super solid to get us into our commander, and Scepter of Eternal Glory, another one that really ramps us into our commander at a very fast rate. Now, let's get into that playtest. Today's playtest. Mm, one land nope give us another another one lander we're going to six. Oh yeah we take this one this is why you always mulligan even in casual let's go ahead and get rid of the island and then we'll go to our first turn draw a card ugin i dig it we'll play the soul ring and then go to our next turn we're just gonna faithless looting here Hmm, ooh, okay, we'll discard this guy. And then probably the Ugin. We're not seeing Ugin for a bit. And then we will go to... Actually, sorry, we can play Impact Tremors here. Right here, we will play Gyerson Starn. 
go to our next turn. Okay, finally a wheel. So we can play this. I guess it's just mana neutral. That doesn't even matter, does it? Nah, just wheel us away. We'll do that and that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brand new hand. We'll go ahead and cast probably Frantic Search. One, oh sorry, we only have two mana open. Yeah, we'll just drop the Mind Stone here and pass the turn. I am seeing a crazy turn ahead of us when we get our commander out though. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. We're one land off, so let's get it here. Let's just uh, spend three mana on the Frantic Search. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. Discard, resculpt, and yeah, if Pass the Flames is fine. And then untap three lands. We're just looking for that land card. Actually, we could seize the spoils too as an additional cast. Discard a card, discard this one. Uh, draw two cards. There's our land. And this is, we also get a treasure token. That's why I like cards like this. It'll get you the ramp even if you don't get the land. Let's make our treasure token. And then we have a blue left. Shared animosity is a red. That's okay. So we have impact tremors and garrison though. And spell swindle. Yeah, this is going to be a nasty hand. We'll just run out this and then pass the turn. Cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only two open. That's rough. Okay. Ovika enters the battlefield and then um, Geist and Starn will trigger because impact tremors will deal um, one damage to each opponent. So that's going to be minus three health to everybody. I really wish we had enough mana for the Jessica's will, but we just don't. Okay, we will go to our next turn. Boop. Okay, now we will cast Jessica's will. That will let's let's keep our token count right here. Where is our Phyrexian goblins? There we go. That'll be three. And that's a total of nine damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Because of impact tremors with um, Garson. So that'll add, we'll say five mana to be conservative. Look at three cards. Okay. We'll go ahead and cast the Throne of Eldraine here. That's going to make us five more. So now we're up to eight. Five times three, that's 15 damage to everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, everybody has 13 health left. Honestly, someone's probably dead. And then we can just call forth the Tempest for... Can we do that, actually? Add four mana of chosen color, spin this man. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah, so we can... Or, sorry, seven, eight. So that's going to make us eight more zombies going up to 16. And then... 8 times 3, that's going to do 24 damage to everybody because of the Impact Tremors and Garrison Starn. Yeah, they just can't let us untap with those three. So that's going to net us the win there. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I would like to thank my uh, high contributing patrons, Newsom, Excessum, Chicken Salad, and Prater. You guys are amazing. Really keep the channel going. If you guys want to become a part of the P Patreon voted deck tech as well. Link to the patrons in the description down below. With that being said, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and I will see you in the next one.